And let's get into the Word of God. Pray for those that are out of town uh, for the holiday and that they will have a great time with family and friends. Amen. And so there's many that are out of town today. So Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 24. We're living in some great times. And the church says, all right. <laughs> Amen. And so um, with, with the word of God spoken to us, with the prophetic word given to us this year, uh, we're people that stand on that prophetic word. But at the same time, we have to encourage ourselves in the Lord, strengthen ourselves in the Lord. Been getting a lot of calls uh, last week and this week past about things that are happening. One particular one is uh, is my nephew called from Houston and was literally just wanting to know if the coming of the Lord is at hand. And I, I spent some time with him, and he says, "Good, because I needed to get my wife saved." And I thought, "Yes, get your wife saved right now." Hallelujah. He said, and so I've never heard things like that happening. Uh, you know, I've heard people talk about that, but people are coming to the Lord simply by what's taking place. And, and he, got to, he got to view the, the Schmidt year that we recorded back in September. He got to view that. I think that gave him some interest and a thirst. Then he went into the four blood moons that we recorded again. And, and so you've got to realize something that whenever you're recording something, when the Lord is speaking to you, it's a prophetic word that's going to encourage people to read. And so I'm thankful for us being online and being able to minister to you and those that are watching by Internet. We had some friends um, watching from the other side of the world excited about this. The only thing is they have to get up in the middle of the night to watch us. And so at least that we're OK, right? But um, there's a lot of frustration going on. I remember when I was frustrated in ministry, well, not frustrated in ministry, frustrated about getting into ministry. There was a pool. I remember meeting with my pastor, and he says, yeah, what you're going through, it, what, what I would not uh, encourage people to stay long in it is uh, called a spiritual frustration. He called it a holy frustration. Because I was um, in business, and I sensed the Lord calling me into ministry and I was in, in between two worlds and I remember the day that I made the declaration in church that I will do the work of the Lord frustration lifted and I remember that frustration was because I was trying to stay in one world in the business world and then trying to kind of avoid the ministry and, and I believe that's where people are today frustration there's frustration everywhere you may be frustration in, in maybe a job or maybe there's a job pull or Maybe something's happening. Maybe God's calling you into business and you're wondering, why should I go into business now when things don't look good? Well, there's a frustration. There's a frustration between really the things of God. And if I may say it this way, and I'm going to talk about this. First of all, I want you to agree with me about something. Say with me, money is a good word. Money is All right. In some circles, when you talk about money, it shuts everybody down. Or they think, that's demonic. You don't talk about money in church. But I really think that if the body of Christ understands uh, the frustration of serving God and making money, there's, there, there is a big peace involved in that. And so there is a big pull between God and money, church and work. I see that all the time as pastors. I see church and work. The kingdom business and the personal business, I see that. I see people frustrated about not having enough finances. Uh, you know, I'm hearing people talk about that, especially those that don't know the, the, the success in the Lord. I see people that are frustrated between, uh, they want to do more with finances for the kingdom of God, but they're in debt. Now, I remember uh, about five years ago, the Lord's been speaking to us about getting out of debt, right? We've been talking about get out of debt. And, uh, you know, we, we taught about it. We, we lived it. Many of us are debt free. And it's exciting when you're debt free. So whenever there's a cause or a purpose of you uh, to give, you give without any, any delay. You give because you want to give. There's times where I remember uh, going to conventions and going to meetings and, you know, we were in debt and I wanted to give, but I knew that, you know, I got to trust God. I got to trust God in this. And it was such a, such a frustration time, frustrated time. You know, you, you want to stay in faith at the same time you're breaking from the natural thoughts and, 
You just have to make a decision. Well, here, when you're debt free, you no longer have that concern, that frustration. Now you're in faith because you came out of debt by faith, right? And you believe in God. So let's look at Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 24. I'm going to read it to you from three different translations, but let me first of all read it to you from the NIV. If you have your Bible open to Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 24. And this is something that I would hear always coming from men and women of God that have broken through from being in debt or being in lack. Notice this, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Say with me, money is a good word. It's understanding money. It's understanding money, right? Notice what it says in the Message Bible. The Message Bible. You can't worship two gods at once. Loving one God, you'll end up hating the other. Adoration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship God and money both. Now, don't you like that one? Now, notice the Amplified. Most of us read the Amplified, and this is, this is powerful. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and money, which is deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. Either way, when you read all these, it's very clear. You cannot have both. I remember when uh, there was a, a department set up for my office years ago. The, the original executive that was there had a secretary. And then I remember my department was at it because it needed an extra department, but they couldn't fund a secretary. And I remember that uh, the boss called us in and said, you know what, what we're going to do is going to share Cheryl. That's her name. We're going to share Cheryl. And I thought, wow, how are we going to do this? He's got so much work. I got so much work. So I told my boss, I said, you know, how long are we going to try? She says, until we can get some funds for your new department. And I said, okay. So here we started. Problem came. Cheryl was used to his work, couldn't get used to my work. And then my work was suffering because I needed a secretary. And uh, it was a tough decision. I remember talking with Cheryl. I know that uh, you have four hours with Owen and then you have four hours with me. What could I do to make it easier so that you can be effective with my department? She says, really, you need your own secretary. <laughs> you know? And I thought about that. I said, that's so true. So I prayed, and I remember that the Lord really spoke to me this scripture. And I remember going to my boss. He's a Christian. Showed him this scripture. He said, that is so true. It is so true. Cheryl cannot be effective with both of you. She has to either you or Owen. Now notice this. This brought to me... And understanding that God is the same way. God does, doesn't want him in your life part-time. He doesn't want you simply, uh, you know, he doesn't want you to want him simply when things are easy. He wants you to want him all the time. Say me all the time. And so now he talks deeper about money and God. In other words... Uh, you cannot serve God or money. Either you'll despise one another. Now, how many people know that? Which is the first one that most people will despise in the natural? God. It's a, it's a known fact. Uh, 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 you know, uh, one of the things that we deal with as ministry is dealing with helping people overcome the, the fight of faith to stay in the word and believe God for greater working conditions. You know, I've talked to people that says, you know, Pastor, I love to be in church Sunday morning, but my job. And so I've always encouraged people to, to believe God that God can give you off on Sunday so that you can worship him effectively. But what happens is uh, there, there seems to be more way or wane or uh, uh, more emphasis on either 
you find another job. And so I think that's the, the dilemma, the frustration that people are in today, even our Wednesday worship or even our, our, our prayer time, whatever it may be. You see what I'm saying? Whatever it may be, there's always a, a frustration. I want to do this, but I can't because of this. You know, it's really easy. All it is is affecting faith or allowing faith to intervene and standing on the principle of God. And I know I'm probably driving the cameraman crazy by moving so much. But anyway, we can erase that later on, right? But anyway, <laughs> uh, so, so we have to understand something that, that it is standing strong in your belief in the word of God that you will cause God to be effective in your life that really the mammon or the money or the situations will now take second nature. Now notice this, the thing about this is there is no want, listen to this, there is no want or there is no fear in our life when we have him involved. I'm talking to people here that have businesses too. There is no fear or want in life when we have him involved in God. Remember, I remember when I was in business, self-employed business, had no advertisement, just simply word of mouth, trusting God. I remember standing on his word more on his word than the desire of how to bring an in income. I stood in his word and income came because God increased that visibility of that business. You see, so in other words, there's no fear and want in those that trust in him. The moment fear and want comes is, is when you push him out, sort of speaking, push him out. Now we start taking that responsibility and then fear comes in, worry comes in, and then we're in doubt. And then the battle all begins. We're living in doubt, worrying, walking away. And then when the, the Lord tries to encourage you in the scripture, you'll say in your heart, well, that doesn't work. Well, it does work. When we put God in it, can you say amen? Putting God in it. Let's look at Psalms, the 34th chapter, about putting some foundational about no want, no want, no want. King David was one that taught us so much. His son taught us so much about no want. But the thing about it is we have to stand upon the foundational of the word of God. Psalms, the 34th chapter, I love this, verse 4. I sought the Lord. The psalmist said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. See, putting God first. Amen. They looked unto him and were enlightened and their faces were, were not ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all together, out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, reverently fear the Lord and delivereth them. These are the angels of the living God. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. There it is again. Verse 9. O fear the Lord ye his saints. That's us. For there is no want no want to them that reverently fear him. Can you say amen? And then verse 10 says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. I like to say it this way, shall not lack in anything, in anything, in anything, in anything. I think the issue is here is understanding money and understanding God. Money serves you. You don't serve money. Money serves you because you serve the Lord. I believe the moment that we understand money, then we understand the purpose of this money, the purpose of this wealth. And when we understand the purpose of this wealth, you're in tune with God's purpose here on earth. I think when we, I think the devil for many years puts people in bondage. When he puts you in bondage, then now you're serving money and literally have to serve money to get out of bondage and the more money have you ever heard people say the more money I make the more money I spend or, or the more money I make the more money it seems like I don't have enough you, you, you know what I'm talking about it, 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 it's a it's a thing that people say you know say I got to get a second job I got to get a third job but listen to this you don't need the second job and you don't need the third job all you need is knowing God and what money is worth what money is worth come on church can you say amen now look at go with me to first Timothy this is where we're going to have to remove some of those stumbling blocks. 
And, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in, a, in a family of ten, including my parents, and my father was the only breadwinner there, the bread, uh, uh, the one that brought in the income. But, but I remember when we started going to church, he started believing God. And I remember seeing a change in his way of believing God than the way of not believing God. And, and it was amazing. People said, well, how do you do it? Well, it was only God, right? But nevertheless, there was still a little lack. We, we, we quite didn't reach that point of of faith that we have now and ladies and gentlemen we have a tremendous amount of faith today to be able to increase in our area of finances and I'm going to say some things at the very end that's going to make you think and it is so true and let me just give you a little touch about that think about it Christ died for you so that you can have money that's, people are going to say <gasps> right now we'll leave it like that I can see the people as a I can see that, 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 that thing that just kind of touches people, right? Because, say with me, money is a good word. Money is a good word. Say it again, money is a good word. All righty, amen. First Timothy, I promise you, I'll get to that, right? I'm going to, I really need to get to that point. Hallelujah, amen. First Timothy, the sixth chapter, verse 10, we're people of the word. Hallelujah, amen. Notice what it says. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after look at that word coveted after they have erred from their faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows that's pain that's hurt that's a heartache right but the key that we see here is not understanding what money is now notice this money allows you to be able to equip what's needed in this land but notice this now the love now now starts covering up that desire and now starts focusing on the want of money rather than fulfilling what is designed to do the want of money I need this I need this you know you can study people that have literally wanted money and wanted money and they have all the money that they can have come on church I knew a gentleman years ago that had so much money but yet he worked day and night to get more and we would always tell him but but you, you lost your wife in this process you lost your children and you're single living in in a nice house but you're working 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 uh, you know the key here was he didn't know the purpose of life he didn't know his purpose in life until later on uh, the story about this was that he gave his life to Jesus I led him to the Lord but the funny the, the strangest thing about this was I was already in ministry in my office in the inner city of Houston and I was calling my wife. You remember that story, and I'll say it again for those that don't remember. I was calling my wife, and my finger ended up dialing his phone number, which I had in my subconscious, because that's where I used to visit with him, his number. And all of a sudden, he answered. I'm saying, hello, who's this? I expected my wife to answer. In fact, it kind of got a little worried. Who's this? You know? <laughs> and so uh, he answered. And uh, that's when I found out that he was dying of cancer. So we immediately made an appointment to go see him, and he gave his life over to the Lord. But the thing about this was you can see that all during his life, the process was love after money, love after money. And he was losing things. He was losing those things that meant so much to him. But yet, the breakthrough for him wasn't there to the very end. He gave his life to Jesus, and he got a breakthrough. And I think about that, I think, wow, if he would have known the purpose of his wealth and he would have given his life to Jesus earlier, then things would have been different. You see, so what was it? It was the money that he was after. He was coveted this, which he pierced himself. Look at it again. Uh, he, uh, they, they pierced themselves. They pierced themselves uh, from uh, themselves through with many sorrows. In other words, it's, it's self-inflicted pain. It is, it is a, a self-inflicted attitude where you get into covetousness, 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 wanting, wanting, wanting. And this is where he, the Lord is telling us. So in other words, there is a big difference between love and, of money, 
and the fear of money. Say with me, the fear of money. Fear. Now notice this, understand this, the world offers uh, materialism, and that's where it's dangerous, but God offers manifestations of his, of his wealth. God offers manifestations of his wealth. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Now go with me to uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter. Let's look at Genesis, the 12th chapter. Hallelujah. Say with me, amen. amen. Say, I'm here today, Pastor. Even though it's hot in here, I'm, I'm fresh. <laughs> you guys doing okay back there? It's, it's nice and cool back there, right? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Notice what it says in Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1. Uh, now, now notice this, verse 1. Remember, the love of money is totally different from, from the, 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 the fear of money. Totally different. Remember, you, you, you need to stay away from love of money, but also watch out and don't get into fear of money, right? Now notice this, uh, verse, verses 1 of chapter 12, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. Notice this. I will bless you and make thy name great. So here we're starting to see something important about Abram's life. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken. Now notice this. Abram now got a word from the Lord. In other words, in other words the word of the Lord was, I'm going to bless you, Abram. I'm going to make your name great, Abram. And uh, you're going to bless many. And those that bless you will be blessed, and those that curse you will be cursed. But Abram, you have to believe that I am God, so get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy father. What's he saying? Get, you, get, get out of your, the comfort zone and go to a land which I'm going to show you. It was a desert land. Nothing grows in the desert, right? Only God can cause things to grow in the desert, right? That's what happened to him. He left by obedience. But notice this. This is what I'm trying to bring you about money. Abraham did not fear money. He did not fear wealth. Because it was wealth that caused Abraham to succeed. Now say with me, it was wealth that caused Abraham to succeed. Now I know it's a little hard to say, but listen to this. It was God that caused Abraham to have wealth so that he can succeed. Right? And then if you read that later, later on, that chapter, Abram, which was now Abraham, was very rich. Look at chapter 13. Abram went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram, verse 2, and Abram was very rich. Say with me, very rich. Very rich. And then it says what he was rich in. Verse 3, and he went on his journey. Oh, so in other words, we see a lifestyle of him obeying God, finding out that his wealth has a purpose. Say with me, wealth has a purpose. Wealth has a purpose. This is where we have to start getting a hold of what my money's for. Now notice, how many people in this room can agree, excitedly say, I want to be wealthy for the kingdom of God? Raise your hand, quickly. I want to be wealthy for the kingdom of God. Now think about it. Being wealthy, now I know we're prosperous in faith, prosperous in the word, but I'm talking about physically in money. Say with me, money? is not a bad word. Now notice this. That means, uh, this is where the key is, and I'm going to get closer to what I said earlier that kind of got you thinking. Now, money is connected with ministry. Come on. That means God uh, is connecting Abraham with wealth for future ministry. And you find out ministry through the work of Abraham. We find out through Jesus Christ now. We that believe in Jesus Christ receive the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. So in other words, that same blessing that Abraham had, that same wealth that Abraham had, that same uh, courage of, of having sufficient for purpose is still is on us now through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now this is the key. If we don't activate in wealth like we should, then we're not effective in ministry. Now, this is where people, sometimes people just shy away from this. Uh, in some circles, you just can't talk like this. I remember uh, uh, years ago, uh, we met with some pastors and, and good pastors in the city. We had a prayer meeting going on. And, and many pastors in the city had a great time from different denominations praying. And I remember that we went out to lunch, and it was probably about 15 of us talking. And all of a sudden, um, one of the things that 
that got their, their vocabulary tuned to was money. And then they started talking about how, you know, uh, you know I'm, in, I'm in debt. One was talking about I'm in debt for the, because this big, he called it literally, a, called it a monster, called this building a monster, right? And I thought about, well, yeah, well, it could be a monster, night, a nighttime monster, you know what I'm talking about, if you don't believe God for finances. And so they were talking, and then they got to the point about finances. And then one pastor says, you know, I just don't understand why people don't give, why people don't give. And my spirit just, uh, you know, have you ever been in a room where you just feel like, you just got dumped with some kind of glue, you know, or uh, I've always worked with glue with my hands and glue just, uh, you can use all kinds of things to take off glue and so on. And all of a sudden it just got me there. And, oh, I wanted to run, but I know God has to give me the words Lord. I, I want to run because I'm a faith person. I want to say something, but Lord, I know I'm going to step on some toes here. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. And do you know about that time the waiter came and dropped her tea when she was serving, dropped the tea and everybody just happened to look right at me. And the tea's all over the place. I said, okay, Lord, you gave me a foundation to talk. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, let me, let me share with you guys something. Uh, and I says, uh, can you believe that God could give you 100% tithers in your church? They looked at me like, no way. No way. Some says we only have 10%. And you know the statistics. There's 20% of people doing the work in the church. That's, that's the, the, the Pew statistics. The Barnes, the Barnes uh, t t statistics says that only 20% of people do the work in churches. And do you know that should not be so? And I remember telling them, it, it, that should not be so. It should be 100%. When we understand about money, and that's where the key came. That's where, where we, like, disciples got indignated when, when they heard about Jesus getting this alabaster box they got a little oh. no no we don't talk about money in our church so I asked the person that had the problem I said so tell me how is your offering how do you do your offering he said we don't talk about it he said in fact there's a box in the back that people want to give they can give and the spirit of the Lord says that's the problem and so I started talking to them about what, what works for me is speaking the word of God Take an emphasis on offering time to speak the word of God because that's where faith is. But the problem with many is there's a fear of money. Say with me, fear of money. Fear of money. And then somehow it gets into the church and nobody wants to talk about money because they think it's a fear of money. And then people think hey, you're talking about my money. And I'm, I, 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 blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about money itself. Money itself. Say with me, money is not a bad word. Money is Amen. Come on, give me a smile, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Money's not a bad word. And so we find here uh, money brings, brings, it, it brings a blessing when we understand there's purpose. Say with me, there's purpose. The kids are having a good time, right? There's purpose. There's purpose. There's purpose. Amen. So in other words, my money, Christine's and my money, which is wealth, has purpose. And you can live the same way. Your wealth can have purpose in the kingdom of God. Have purpose in the kingdom of God. When you go to work Monday morning, now you're going to a place that is not my job, that is not my work, but is a place that God had put me to ministry, in ministry so that I gather seed, and this seed now multiplies for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And listen to this. While it multiplies for the kingdom of God, guess what? You enjoy the benefits of it. Come on, church. I've never seen someone that, that, is, that is poor enjoying the benefits of wealth. I've only seen wealthy people enjoying the benefits of wealth when they serve God. Enjoying the benefits of wealth when they serve God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. I believe Callie's having a good time back there, right, Christy? It's Callie, I think, I hear, right? Now, notice this. When we lay hold of this principle, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what really spoke to me, we begin to walk in wealth. But notice this. Notice this. There's something that we're missing in wealth. When Abram, when God told Abram, Abram, do this, and I'll do this. So in other words, it was, it was a, a process that he made. In other words, he made a covenant with Abraham. Give me your hand, Jennifer. Ab God made a covenant with Abraham. He said, Abram, get thee out, out of your fathers and your mothers, and I'll make you great. I will bless you. I'll bless those that bless you. What's he doing? He's making a covenant with Abraham. Now, this is the key that I want you to add to wealth. Covenant wealth. Say it would be covenant wealth. See, this is where God can put you into covenant wealth. That you, you will understand money. 
You'll understand purpose. You'll understand your job. You'll understand the seeds. But now he's adding to you covenant. Covenant now causes you to have increased wealth for his kingdom. I'm telling you folks, uh, th there's a person that I know that, uh, that sells oil tubing for oil rigs. And listen to this. Made a lot of money in the years gone by. Still, he's retired, but still now he's advising others. But notice this. He said this. He says this. Do you know that our company has not been affected with these sales or the oil conditions that we're in right now? Now, how much is the oil barrels going today? Come on, somebody help me out. At one time, they were almost $199 a barrel. Now they dropped to what? Almost? Almost? Somebody help me out. Do you remember? Almost below $3 a barrel. Now think about it. That's, that's pretty... That is very low. You can't make money in that way. Now, notice this. Now, it's good for, the, for you and I to go fill up our gas tanks, but it's bad business for the oil company. It's really bad for those that are drilling oil out there. It's really bad for them. But notice what he said. He said this. It doesn't matter how it affects industry, how industry is affected. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. In fact, it causes me to increase. People, for some reason now, are going to buy more drilling, more drilling tubes, more drilling tubes, more drilling tubes, because they know whenever there's a drop, there's going to be an increase. Whenever there's a completely increase, there's going to be a drop. So in other words, it's almost like not fearing the market, but trusting God. But in his case he knows his purpose let me tell you why his purpose for wealth is the kingdom of god oh ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you his purpose is for the kingdom of god one day the testimony that rings to my ears is so powerful that he was flying over latin america going on a business trip flying over latin america he flew over mexico city now listen to this mexico city he flew over mexico city and the lord spoke to him says here in this city you're going to help a ministry go on television here now at that time government was ruling Latin America, Go the, the television ministry or the television networks were the government was ruling them. You couldn't go in there as a ministry and say, I want to buy airtime. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do that. It was all government, 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 government. Well, he ended up going to his trip, came back and asked for a stop in Mexico City. This is his faith. Now listen to this. I know this personal person this way personally. And he made a short stop trip to Mexico City, landed, got off at the airport, and just was walking the airport. I've been there, walking the airport, just praying the Holy Spirit, praying the Holy Spirit. Now notice this, uh, this missionary or this, this national evangelist was there to pick up someone from the airport, which I know him also, and uh, Jennifer and I and uh, Christine have been to his ministry there. He was walking the airport, going to the gate. At that time, they allow you to go to the gate, and he was looking for someone he was picking up, and all of a sudden, they r bumped into each other, literally bumped into each other, walking in this crowded airport, and the man says, uh, in Spanish, bendiciones, uh, for, you know, please forgive me, uh, blessings on you. And he says, Ministry of Mexico, yes. He said, I need to talk to you. That was the person right there and then. Now think about it. They talked about business, and listen to this. That ministry became the first ministry that was on national or on television and on government owned television and literally God was setting this ministry up why because there was a there was a uh, 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 what do you call it um, Christine the sleeping woman it was a volcano that's that word I'm looking at the volcano which was called the sleeping woman it looks like a woman sleeping and it was ready to erupt and listen to this where were the eruptions taking place where was the ashes that were falling were falling right in the city of this minister where he lived and the thing that I'm trying to tell you is how God used the wealth of someone in the United States to bring purpose for someone that was trying to do an outreach. And when that volcano exploded and a lot of ash happened, guess where thousands of people came for refuge? Thousands of people came on the property of this ministry. I notice this. This is wealth in action. Covenant wealth in action producing the work of God to this day. Now, they're awesome people. They're working together, right? Look at Haggai. I want to show you something in Haggai. Uh, Keith Moore said something at the convention that really blessed me. And, and, and when he said that, he says, now, is, does every giving have a return? And that was an answer. We all said, yeah, every giving has a return, right? But look at Haggai. Now, notice this. Every time do you give, uh, do you expect a return? Is there a return in every every min, in everything that you give? Is there a return? Come on, church. Is when you sow, is there a return? Yes. Now here is an instance, and that's what I said too. I said yes. 
So we get ready to, to understand something. Look at Haggai said here. Haggai, the first chapter. Let's look at Haggai, the first chapter. Now notice this. Notice this. Uh, uh, verse 2. Oh, verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord. Are you there, Haggai? <laughs> then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you to dwell in your circled or sealed houses and this house lie in waste? In other words, the house of God at this, the temple was in ruins. I'll give you a little instructions or, or a little uh, familiar history of this. By this time, all it was was the foundation. The walls were knocked down and people were using it for refuge. Now they were throwing trash on it. It was becoming a, a, a place to throw trash, right? Now notice what it says in, in Haggai 1, uh, verse, verse 4. Is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie in waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. In other words, look at this. Consider. You have eaten so and much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled. You drink and you clothe not. Uh, you, you clothe you, but there is none warm, and he that earneth the wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Look at this. You have sown much, go all the way down, to put into bags with holes. You have sown much, but put into bags with holes. Now, now notice this. This is, this is so true. This is so true. Now notice this. Not every seed that you sow will return to you, unless it's in faith and in the Word of God. Now notice this. This is now purpose giving now. This is purpose wealth, purposeful wealth. This is wealth where you understand now I have a purpose for my giving. These people, all they had was their own purpose, their own desire, their own lives. That's all they wanted. They didn't care. In fact, uh, listen to what it says here. It says here um, in verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Verse 9, you look for much and lo, you, it comes to little. And so he's telling them, look, consider, consider what's going on. Consider what's going on in your life. Consider what's going on. And this is where we have to understand something. I think when we get into the fear of money, the fear of money, not thinking that God can use my little money. In fact, uh, listen, any giving into the kingdom of God will produce results when it has purpose. Now notice this, uh, when people take you out to food to eat and they say, well, let me pay for that. Do you know something? They're doing it out of kindness and they do it because they love you. They want to bless you. But have you ever thought about it? Consider your ways. Why are you doing this? Right? And I think about it. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Well, it's because I just want to do it. No, no. I think you should be paying for my meal with the, because you want to, because it has purpose. Now, you need to believe God for this purpose, 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 purpose. See, what happens, we're so loose with our finances. We, we, we don't really think about that our finances, but when it comes to the kingdom of God, we try to concentrate on what should we do for this kingdom or this ministry. We're loose everywhere else, but we're not really focusing on ministry. You see what I'm saying? This is what happened here. They did not see the foundation of the temple of God. They were living their lives. In fact, they were probably the ones taking their trash themselves to the, to the foundation. But all of a sudden, listen to this, all of a sudden, this is where I want you to get excited about this. Verse 14, and the Lord stirred the spirit of Zebul, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zebul, the son, listen to this, Zerubbabel got excited about this. He focused on something. He focused on something. And, and listen to this, verses 6 of the chapter 2, now I want you to see this, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is like a little while that I will shake the heavens and the earth and the seas and the dry land. Well, hallelujah, wake up everybody. That's what's happening now. There's a shaking going on. There's a shaking going on, right? And, and I will shake all nations and desires of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. So in other words, while everything else is going on out there, God says, get a hold of this. I'm going to shake the house of God. Not only that, but I'm going to bring some glory to the house of God. Amen. Come on, church. I think this is the time that we're living. Glory is coming to the house of God. There's things to do for the kingdom of God. The earth, the, the, there's things that have been shaken. And many of you have been going through some shakings, I believe. Maybe a lot of us have been going through some shakings. And let me tell you, shaking's good because it removes things that are in the way. So in other words, shakings are good. But now, what's happening? Why? So he can feel glory back in the house. It would mean glory back in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. And we talked about glory before, right? Now notice this. Listen to what it says. The Bible says the silver, verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Reminding you, wealth 
is mine. It's in my hand. And I'm going to release it. I'm going to release it. In verse 9, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, this is where money connects with his kingdom. Listen to this. The house of God is, is all tore down. Foundation is just laying there. He awakens the people of God. He says, gold and silver is me. I have this. Awaken, consider your ways. Now Zerubbabel gets excited about this. Puts it, to, puts it to practice. Now money connects with mission. And now the temple of God is going up. The temple of God is going up. Why? Because the glory of God wants to come, church. Come on, church. The glory of God wants to come, church. Come on, church. Isn't it amazing? The glory of God wants to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Look what it says in verse 18 now. Uh, the second chapter. We can go all over this book of Haggai. The notice it says, Consider now from this day and upward from the fourth and the twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. Consider it. Notice it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea. Is it yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day? I will bless you. From this day, I will bless you. In other words, Amen. consider your ways. I like that when God says consider your ways. Look at ministry now. And look at it blossoming, growing. Because we understand not that money is evil and there's fear in money, but money has purpose. And purpose now brings wealth and wealth brings the covenant that we would even got. Come on, church, can you say amen? The covenant. Now, now think about it. Think about what you and I can do with more money in the kingdom of God. I'm speaking some truth here now. Think about what you can do. Think about what you can do when, when, when uh, ministry is called upon to do things. I mean, uh, you know, with all these that's taking place, with all that's taking place around the world, you know, think about what we can do. Think about what we can do in this city. Uh, it, with finances. Think about that. Now, yes, it takes faith to reach out, but it also takes the physical to open the hearts of people. You know, I can tell Jennifer, Jennifer, serve God, serve God, serve God, and just go find you some food, right? But if I tell Jennifer, Jennifer, let me give you some food. Let me feed you. Let me give you some nice clothes, and let me tell you about Jesus. Doesn't that do something to Jennifer now? Doesn't that do something to all of us, right? Come on, church. Amen. You know, I remember one time uh, a vacuum cleaner salesman came to our house years ago when they were selling Kirby. Remember Kirby? Uh, we're selling Kirby and this guy you could tell he just got his job but you know he was at it he was at it he was at it and, and, and he came and showed us he put dirt on our, on our lawn and on our carpet and showed us how it worked and then uh, I was looking for a job at that time uh, you know and I said uh, I said are you making money he said oh man I make a lot of money and the first thing I looked at were his shoes his shoes had some holes in it right and I thought really you need some shoes he said oh yeah I just what, what was he presenting to me he was presenting to me that you can't make there's lack there's lack right now, I don't care what you do if there's lack that's going to speak come on church that's going to speak lack will speak louder to an unbeliever but if you show them the love of God and you show them the purpose of money I tell you it'll open up hearts it'll open up people's lives am I there church uh, can you say amen that is so true Come on, church, that is so true. You know, and so literally it, it opens up. So no, notice this. There's things that happen. We have to understand that money and ministry have to work together to get the job done. Now, this is the last scripture that I'm going to give you. And this is where I made you realize something so tremendous that I said earlier, right? Come on, church, go with me to 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. I want you to break through. If there is any lack in your life, break through. If there is any want in your life, break through from it. If there is things that are holding you back, maybe there's a, some generational curse of poverty that has come and snuck through the, through the pipe. Uh, you, know, you have every right to stop it and hinder it. Uh, stop it from hindering your life. Now that's what it says in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. And I love this scripture. Uh, listen to what it says here. I speak not by commandment, by, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Now notice what he says in verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
that though he was rich. This is where we tend not to read. For you know that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, for my sake, he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might be made altogether the word rich. Now this is, this is, this is why I said that earlier. He says, this is what he did for you on the cross. Not only did he save your soul, he delivered us from death, hell, and the grave. He delivered us from that. But also there's something that we're, we're, we, we need to remember. He delivered us from being poor. Now think about it. Poverty is not a condition that comes on you simply by the care or the not caring. No, it's a spiritual thing that attacks you from reaching your potential. Come on. It's a spiritual thing. Have you ever driven uh, into certain parts of town uh, uh, and, and, and you sense something you sense and you say oh I sense something in this town I better just keep moving on and you sense different it's the way in cities I remember going to Detroit one time and, uh, and I went to Detroit you know Detroit's just about going under quick fast and I can tell you why there's so many th demonic activities that are going on now with this new uh, Satanist thing that they put up there but I remember driving through there man I'm telling you some strong holes in that city strong holes and then you can go to other cities you can feel different. How many people know what I'm talking about? So in other words, you can sense poverty. It's a spiritual thing. So in other words, poverty is a spiritual thing that comes at you to put you in a purpose or in a situation not to be able to be governed by the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, this is so powerful. If you'll break through from the spirit of poverty, and I'm just encouraging you this, that pray for others that, that have lack in their life. You know, I think about people that have lack in their life. It's not God's will. Listen to what I'm saying. And, and this is going to stir you up, and I want to stir you up today. I want to build your faith. I want you to get, get tough like a, like a bulldog with tenacity and say, oh, I'm standing on the word of God. Poverty is not welcome in the kingdom of God. Come on, church, can I say that again? Poverty is not welcome in the kingdom of God. Now, see, you've got to remember something. There are circles and people that don't believe like this. You know that money, or you know that alabaster box that was broken over Jesus? Some will look at this as, well, you know what? They should have given it to the poor. I'm telling you what, Jesus answered that question right then and then. If you ever have a thought that it should have been given to the poor, Jesus said, the poor you'll always have with you, but me you won't have with you. I'm telling you, folks, this, this, this is something that you have to really break through from in, in our life. Poverty, poverty. You know, uh, when you drive into areas and you sense this poverty, break the stronghold while you're there. Say, I break the stronghold of poverty over this city, over that person that's begging on the corner. I break the power of lack over that person. You see, it's not God's will for people to be like that. It hinders the kingdom of God. I think I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Come on, church. Say amen. I'm wondering, are you guys okay with this? Am I in, the, in, the, in another circle here? Come on, church. So say with me, money's good. Money good. Say it like you mean it. Money's good. good. When it has purpose. It has purpose. Amen. Yes. Now say this with me. Money, money, come to me now in Jesus' name. Yes. And notice this. Let money come to you and get it involved in God's kingdom. Put it immediately into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so let me reemphasize that when you allow yourself to be broke, this is so powerful. I'm going to say to those that are watching. When you allow yourself to be broken poor, it's totally against what Jesus did for you on the cross and through his blood. It's totally against it. I want you to think about that. When I allow poverty and lack to come into my life, it's totally against what Jesus did on that cross and through his blood. It's totally against it. So I'm telling you, go after that, that, that little demonic activity of poverty family poverty and don't settle for that don't settle for that give yourself right out of it break yourself out of it and i'm speaking to those uh, that 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 you're going to find yourself ministering to those that are that are literally lack there's people today um halliburton in houston lost so many jobs over the weekend that, that's almost three thousand people that's not including all the other old companies so if you run across someone that is literally just frustrated about life, about finances, you have every right to share them the word of God and tell them the way to break through from this lack is to get in that word, trust Jesus, and believe God.
for breakthrough. Amen. And in fact, listen to this. Every one of those 2,000 people that lost their jobs, they have the ability to get into wealth quickly. They have the ability to start their own business. Well, pastor, they can't start business this time. Yeah, they can do anything they can in Jesus' name, right? We can do all things through Christ. Come on, church, stand up. Let's stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you get something this morning? Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Breakthrough. 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 Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.